All right, let's keep it going. Woo! Nationalize long-term care. 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 Long-term care. Nationalize long-term care. Nationalize long-term care. People's health over private profit. 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 All right, let's do one more. Yeah, I like that one. More staff, more pay. More, more staff, more pay. 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 Thank you so much. It is now uh, my great pleasure to introduce former MDP member of provincial parliament, the, the Reverend Dr. Sherry DeNovo. Take it away, Sherry. Woo! Woo! <laughs> okay, uh, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, first of all, I just have to say that I'm standing in front of a tragedy. I'm standing in front of a humanitarian crisis where over 50 human beings, they are not numbers, have died, where hundreds of their relatives are unable to be with them when they die, where seniors are calling 911 for food, where people are Shay. dying of dehydration, and where staff are working without adequate PPEs, where staff are underpaid, and many of the staff here don't have enough sick days, so they can't afford to take time off work. Shame! Where the average, average hourly wage is in the 20s for most staff. Imagine that. This is danger pay for risking your life. Almost half of the staff have been infected that are on active duty here. Shame! I'm standing in front of a humanitarian crisis. That's where I'm standing. And I am standing for all of those people out there who couldn't be here, who couldn't be with their loved ones, and for those who have died across the country, not just here. And I ask you, we don't have GPs working for a profit. We don't have hospitals working for a yep. profit. Why, when they're mo at their most vulnerable, at their most fragile, do we insist on making a profit from our seniors' illness and frailty? Shame! It's outrageous and Absolutely it's shameful. disgusting. Yes. It's outrageous and shame, it's shameful shame. and it's disgusting. And then, what has the government done? First of all, Minister Fuller Fullerton has never stepped into this place. She called it in. She phoned the management. And then she came out and said the situation is stable. Stable is losing over 50 people who have died. That's stable in this government's books. That's what they call stable. Where is she? Where is the minister? Why isn't she here? Why isn't she inspecting every long-term care place that has an outbreak and that is under this kind of situation? Why isn't she standing Absolutely. with the staff? Why Shame. isn't she paying the staff what they deserve? Danger pay for risking their lives and their families' lives. Why isn't she doing that? What has this government done? Made it more difficult to sue places like this. Disgusting. Absolutely are. shameful. That's what they've done. But I'm telling you this, the lawyers are massing up because even though they've made it more difficult to sue, they have not made it impossible. So I say get a lawyer and get a lawyer and also, more importantly, nationalize health care. Nationalize health care. Nationalize health care. 
We fought for this. Tommy Douglas fought for this. You know, many people, this is what makes us different from south of the border. Why are we going down this route in this province? This is outrageous. And I say to the families, you are not alone. You are not alone. I would say most people in this country and in this province and this city stand with you and desperately pray with you that not one more senior dies until this management pays the price. So stand up, fight back, and remember, this could be you, and yes, this could be your that's right. loved one. That's right. So stand with our seniors, stand with our frail, and no more profit in health care, please. Thank you. Yeah! No more profit! No more profit! No more profit! No more profit! Uh, this is this is gross incompetence on the government level. This is not gross incompetence on the staff. We have been fighting for four hours per resident per day of health care for decades now. And not one administration at Queen's Park has stepped up to make this so. So I'm going to say that this government is worse than any of the others. Because right now we have a pandemic and they're not addressing it in any way, shape or form. There should be twice the number of staff at twice the pay in that place right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. 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 Thank you so much, Sherry. Thank you. Grace to our country. Yes. That's right. Okay. We have one more scheduled speaker and then I'm going to open the mic. Uh, I'd like to call Ken, SEIU Union Rep. Come forward, please, Ken. Woo! Yes! Hello, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. First of all, I just want to give out my condolences to all the family members here that have lost loved ones in the building. My heart goes out to you. I can't imagine what you're going through. As part of the SEIU, I'm proud to represent these members in here, and I'm ashamed to be part of Ontario with our government. Shame. This LTC sector is broken, and it needs to be fixed. Yes. Enough Absolutely. of the Band-Aid solution. Enough of profit over care. I'm here to stand and echo with the individual that organized this. SEIU is strong, and we want to stop profit over care. Yes. Yes. Enough is enough. So dirty. The Ford government needs to get a plan, not an excuse. Yes. Enough is enough. Thank you very much for coming. And God bless all of you in solidarity. Enough is enough. Care over profit. Care over, over profit. profit. Care, Care over profit. 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 All right. Now, uh, some of the media uh, missed a little bit of some of the speeches. So just before we open the mic, I'm going to ask, uh, please, Corey, if you would come back and just make a few statements so that everybody in the media can get the chance to uh, to hear you speak, Corey. Woo! Thank you. Corey! <laughs> I'll keep it short. And I wanted to add something while I was listening to uh, other, other speakers talk. Uh, and that's about precarious work. And, um, and just in general, the sort of culture that goes on and that I see in Ontario. Um, I mean, I used to work in uh, group homes for Community Living Toronto. And, uh, and, and I've talked to people now, and I was a part-time worker when I worked there. And so I, I saw the union maybe twice, the union reps came out and saw us. It was, it was unions weren't involved like, in, in, in the day-to-day -day actions of, of, of uh, they weren't involved in, in, in the care there. But what's happening now in, in, in places like this, in long-term care and in group homes, is, is they're going towards agencies, they're going towards temporary staff, because it's cheaper, because they don't have to worry about paying sick days or vacation days, it's all handled by the agency. So, and, and when, when you look at that, they're, they're paying maybe the same amount of money for the worker, but the worker's not getting the same amount of money. The worker's being paid far less yes. than, than a unionized full-time yes. employee, right? So, so the worker's being screwed, 
and 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 the people who are being cared for are being screwed because they're getting not quality care from people who they don't know who are going back and forth between facilities. It was only recently that the government was forced after pressure to stop the, the back and forth of, te of, of precarious staff or temporary staff between these long-term care facilities. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's something we have to address in society. Precarious work is everywhere. We see fedora drivers, we see, you know, we need to think about, about how we organize society, that everyone deserves a fair shake, everyone deserves a decent job, everyone deserves a decent life. You know, and we need to fight for that because clearly the people that manage the society, both the super wealthy and the politicians, don't seem to care. They don't seem to want to address this massive wealth that exists in society. You know what? People right say that these yeah. taxes are too high. Billionaires are too much. We need to get rid of billionaires. Yeah! It is, it is ridiculous that someone can amass this kind of profit, that a corporation can amass this kind of profit. It's disgusting. This wealth needs to, was created by society. It should belong to society. And so that's what we're here to say, um, and, and, and that this wealth should be used to benefit society, should be benefit these seniors in long-term care, and, and all people here. So thank you for coming out today. I really appreciate it. I, I hope, I'm sure the people here appreciate it, um, both the workers and, and, and the seniors who are living here. And, and, and thank you. Let's, let's keep on the fight in solidarity. Solidarity! Solidarity! Corey! 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 Okay. <laughs> Nationalize long-term care. 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 Nationalize long term care. Nationalize long term care. People before profits. 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 Okay. Um, we have uh, someone who's got a family member in River, River Glen long term care. This is Maureen McDermott. Her, uh, her parents or parent is in River Glen and she'd like to address us. Please come forward, Maureen. Welcome, Maureen. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, everybody. Um, so this is my second time here in a week. And when I was here on Tuesday, a tragic 46 lives were lost. And Shame. now that number is at 52. So here's my question for Fullerton and Doug Ford. Do we have a cap number on how many lives need to be lost here before we bring in intervention? Shay. Tell us what the number is, because we're at 52 funerals being planned right now. What's that number going to look like tomorrow and the next day? This is disgusting. Absolutely. My mother resides in a long-term care, and putting in the, her in long-term care was the worst day of my life handing that over, but I had to have faith, and I did have faith, and then COVID happened, and Pandora's box has been opened to show time after time that it's profits, not care, that is happening. Shay! We went to River Glen telling him where to get PPE. He said it was too expensive. 37 people died in my mom's long-term care. He asked families to donate the PPE while he's paying out profit shares. Disgusting. I Absolutely disgusting. my mom since March. My mom became COVID positive on Mother's Day. I looked at her through a dirty window and I thought I was saying goodbye because of profit over care is the bottom line. These private owners are not giving up their management and calling in the help that's needed because they are too focused on profit. Mike Harris is being given an order of Ontario for his hero. time after time after time that it's all about profits. They're awarding Mike Harris. They created Bill 
218 and threw that thing through legislation so fast while all of us have our names on lawsuits demanding accountability. It is nothing but this government protecting. JT, Justin Trudeau, forget about the invite. Bring in the military, yes. bring in the Red Cross, get profits out of long-term care, and put long-term care on the Canada Health Act. Yes. Solidarity. Nationalize long-term care. 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 37 dead at River Glen. 52 at Tender Care. When do we stop counting? I want to stop counting. Change the system. Yep. Okay. Uh, I would now like to call on John Orrick from the Thornhill New Democratic uh, Electoral District Association. Thornhill is uh, very close to this riding. He's gonna say something about the pharmaceutical industry. Please come forward, John. Woo! Welcome, John! Hello, everybody. Welcome, and thanks for everybody for coming out. I, I wanna talk for just a moment about uh, the pharmaceutical industry here in Canada. Do you notice we're, we're looking to Britain, AstraZeneca, to the United States, Pfizer, looking for, uh, a vaccine. All these companies have been given billions of dollars from their governments going from the taxpayers into shareholder profit. In in Canada here, you notice we're not finding a, a vaccine here in Canada. You know why? We don't have a publicly owned pharmaceutical company. But a long time ago we did. In 1989 we had Connaught Laboratories was owned by the University of Toronto. Another conservative had a, another great idea. We're going to privatize Connaught Labs. We're going to sell it to a French conglomerate, which they did. That was Brian Mulroney, another conservative, by the way. Privatized. Shame. So now we don't have a, a, a pharmaceutical company in Canada, but we could have one. We could take over Sanofi Pasteur again, and oh. we could take over Apotex. Can you hold this? Another company that's made $4 billion in, in profits over patent protection. So this is what I think we need as well. It ties into this whole issue. We need a publicly owned pharmaceutical company in Canada. Thank you. Nurse. Well, we need a nurse over here. Somebody's uh, fallen. They need 